Hello, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com. And today I am going to be talking about whether or not you should prepare your own hydroponic nutrients. First of all, let's talk about the common approaches to fertilizer preparation in hydroponics, how most people use nutrients. So there's mainly three ways. We have the general liquid concentrated nutrients, the type of thing that you buy from things like general companies like General Hydroponics, Advanced Nutrients, etc., etc. And this also includes their one parts and their old solid blends. So these are all fertilizers that you are basically told how to use and that they sell you prepackaged and that are usually very expensive. Then the second case is a mixture of these sort of blended fertilizers and raw fertilizer salts. So think about people who use master blend or who use Jack's fertilizers. So these are usually fertilizers that are blended but lack one or two things. Most commonly they will lack, they will lack calcium and they will lack some nitrogen and they are designed to be complemented by calcium nitrate or by uh, calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate or things like this. So this is the second approach. Then the third approach is uh, to use only salts, use raw fertilizers. In this case, you buy all the raw fertilizers and you make your own nutrient solutions using these raw materials, which are often the same raw materials that are used by all these nutrient companies to make either things like the general hydroponics concentrated solutions or the Athena concentrated solutions or the master blend or the jacks, etc., etc. Okay, let's now talk about the factors that, have, that will affect your decision, the factors that determine whether you should be making your own nutrients or not. I think about three factors that are very important for this. The first factor is the cost of fertilizer. Is the fertilizer, well, how much does it cost to make? Uh, which we will discuss in a little bit. The second factor is uh, the cost of manufacturing. How expensive it is to be making this fertilizer yourself. And the third and final factor that I'm going to discuss is the risk of manufacturing. There is an inherent risk in doing something yourself instead of letting somebody else do it for you. And by doing this, uh, by making your own fertilizers, you are fully assuming this risk. Let's talk about the first factor, the cost of fertilizer. These liquid concentrated pre-blended or solid pre-blended fertilizers are very expensive. But so are raw fertilizer salts in small quantities. If you are going to be making, I don't know, a small reservoir of nutrients, then buying small amounts of these raw salts to make these solutions yourself is going to be quite expensive. So to make this cost effective, you will need to buy relatively large amounts of these fertilizers. This is most critical for things like the micronutrients. If you are, for example, thinking about making your own nutrients, you will need a copper salt like copper EDTA or copper sulfate. Copper sulfate, you will need to buy half a pound or a pound or maybe even more. And then that will last for like 20 years, depending on how much solution you're making. If you have a small grow, then this will last for a really, really long time. So this means that you will be making a big commitment because the quantities you need to buy will be larger to make this cost effective. So you are going to be doing this for a long time or you will just have these salts lying around. Now, the second factor, cost of manufacturing. In the cost of manufacturing, I am considering things like the lab equipment that you need. Preparing fertilizers yourself, preparing these blended fertilizers and these hydroponic nutrients yourself involves having some basic setup. You will need to have scales that are accurate. You will need to have glassware that you can use to standardize solutions. And you will need to have an adequate place to store all these things and to carry out this manufacturing. So yeah, you can DIY a lot of this, but it comes with some risks. Um, the, some, some risks inherent to the manufacturing, which we'll discuss now, but 
<clears throat> having a place to do this yourself is very important. So having a specific location. And another important thing about the cost of manufacturing is the labor cost. The labor cost is often ignored, especially if you are doing it yourself. But the fact that you're going to be spending time mixing this fertilizer is not mm, something that you can just discount. For example, if you're making, I don't know, if you're making uh, $50 an hour in your job or 20 or whatever, that's time that you are not spending working, but you're spending making these fertilizers. And it is also time that you are not going to be spending working on your grow. So you are going to be less efficient. So these are all costs that are important to consider when you're doing the manufacturing. The cost of the quality control is also important. Like if you're going to be making your own fertilizers, it is very important for you to carry out chemical analysis of the solutions that you are making or the blends or whatever you're making to ensure that you are reaching the accuracy levels and the fertilizer levels that you want. Of course, you can do bare bones and DIY this as much as you can and try to not do analysis and keep a lot of steps and skip a lot of costs and probably your plants won't die. But this is not an acceptable solution if you are going to be doing this long term and especially if you're going to be doing this at a commercial level. All these things, adequate storage spaces, labor costs, cost of quality control are all things that need to be taken into account when you're making your own fertilizers. It is often the case that once you factor all of this in, it might not be worth it to make everything yourself from scratch. The last factor I want to discuss is the risk of manufacturing. <clears throat> there is a risk inherent to the manufacturing process that <clears throat> is just inherent to the fact that you're doing this yourself. When you buy nutrients from General Hydroponics or from Advanced Nutrients or from any of these companies that are not sponsoring this video, you will see that uh, they have their own quality control methods and you are assuming that everything they do is correct. And they do this at a large industrial scale and they have been doing this for a long time and they have procedures in place to sort of ensure that you get a given level of quality. If you are going to be doing nutrient preparation yourself, you are assuming all the risks of quality control and of mistakes in the manufacturing process. These can be very expensive and very disheartening uh, when, you are, when you have either a small or a larger grow. When you have a commercial grow, it can be economically devastating. You can kill all of your plants because of a single mistake weighing solutions if you don't have adequate quality control measures. Or you can kill your small garden, which might be a good learning experience for a person just doing this at a small scale. But it is definitely not something that uh, you want if you have anything commercial or anything that, that is risky. So this is a risk that can happen. Another risk that is inherent to manufacturing is the risk of accidents. Of course, accidents can happen with concentrated nutrient bottles. You can spill them, a child can drink them. There are a lot of things that could happen with nutrients just by, just by the fact that they are hydroponic nutrients. But if you are manufacturing the nutrients and you have all these raw salts lying around and you have them in large scale, then the risk of accidents is way greater. Bear in mind that you probably have some limits in what you can store in terms of fertilizer in a home before it becomes an insurance issue. Like you cannot have half a ton of calcium nitrate inside a house and expect insurance to be an insurance company to overlook that if you have fire or something like that. Many of these salts are pretty mellow. Some are very strong oxidants, like all the nitrates are very strong oxidants and they can actually make fires way worse. There is also the risk of the heavy metal salts. All these heavy metal salts are serious. They are serious in the sense that they can be very toxic and the powders that, are, that come off of them can be very bad for your health. So if you have these things laying around, they need to be adequately stored. There is a risk inherent to having them. Another risk is the loss of productivity that you will face by having to make the fertilizers yourself. So all this time that you'll be spending or that other people in your company will be spending making fertilizers, ensuring their quality is good, will be time that they will not spend doing something else. There is money, time, all of these costs that I already mentioned and these risks. 
So, should you make your own hydroponic nutrients? The first thing to consider is do you want to make your own hydroponic nutrients regardless of all the practical aspects of it? If you are curious, if you want to have more control, if you want to learn about this, then by all means do so. You should if you want to. I mean, I've done this since, I mean, from since I was 17, I've been making my own hydroponic nutrients and it's been a great learning experience. So if you're doing it for the learning and if you're doing it because you want to have control, regardless of cost, regardless of risk, then do it by all means. But bear in mind that you will have these costs and these risks in here into trying to do this yourself. Now, if we're talking about whether you should do this at a larger scale or if it's practical for you as a small grower to do this, even though you, you really don't care about fertilizer manufacturing and about learning about all that, then it depends. Do you have a large enough scale? Not in terms of like the instrument, but is the scale of your grow large enough? If you are growing a lot of plants, then it makes sense because you are probably spending a lot of fertilizer and it might be worth it for you to spend the time and money necessary to make this much more in-house. Then this, the other point is, can you afford the costs? Can you afford the costs of labor, the costs of storage, the cost of quality control, all these costs that are additional? Are you willing to uh, go into these costs? Are you willing to spend a lot of money up front in order to save more money, much, a lot more money down the line? In the case of large scale, it is a no-brainer because tons, you can buy tons of these fertilizers for a fraction, a small fraction of what you would pay for the same amount of fertilizer from one of the large uh, hydroponic nutrient companies. Now, in reality, the way things work, the approach that makes the most sense for m most people is to use a blended approach. So using something like Jax or Master Blend and then using calcium nitrate or magnesium sulfate or whatever to complement these fertilizers is a no-brainer for most people. It is going to be the lowest cost, lowest effort way to come up with a hydroponic fertilizer. You will have limited control because your micro ratios will be fixed. You will not be able to have the flexibility that you will, would have if you made your own salts. You will not learn the same that you would learn if you did everything yourself. But if the objective is to grow plants cheaply and abundantly with minimal hassle and you don't care about gaining 10% more yield or increasing your quality of product a little bit by tweaking your nutrients, then coming up with a regime using one of these blended fertilizers that are pretty low cost and then pairing it with these raw fertilizers is the way to go. So if you are unsure about what you should be doing, then this blended approach is probably the no-brainer solution for you. However, as I mentioned, if you're curious, if you wanna learn to make your own, that's great. If you are large scale and you wanna make your own because you don't wanna spend a lot of money on master blend or you wanna customize or you wanna extract that additional 10% yield or even 20% yield, or you want to adapt your fertilizers to your water, for example, then this is very important. Some people have water sources that require specifically formulated fertilizers because their water is too hard, uh, or their water has a lot of silicates in it, or the water has a lot of magnesium. So all these things require custom adaptation of solutions that you cannot achieve if you just use like Master Blend or Jax or whatever. So, in conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned uh, some, some things about uh, whether or not you should be making your own fertilizers and which one of the three approaches makes the most sense for you as a hydroponic grower. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video and bye-bye.